All right, I'm here with Ben Percy and Nat Wilson. Ben Percy just wrote and directed uh, 13th Night. We got Nat Wilson, one of the uh, leads in it, uh, the the monster, if you will. A uh, couple questions for you guys. First off, that was awesome. Loved it. Thank you. Um, like tell me, here. yes, thanks for being out here at Horror Fest. We love having, we love it when the filmmakers and the cast and crew are able to make it out. So, so glad to have you here. Um, first question for you, Ben. And you, I know you already did kind of a Q&A, but I want to touch on some of those things that you kind of had mentioned previously. So first is, tell me a little about kind of the genesis of this idea, where this came from, where it got started. Sure. So I've been a member of the WGA Screenwriters Union since 2014. And during that time, I've worked with a lot of powerhouse people, a lot of you know major players like Stars and Paramount and Sony. And I've been continually frustrated by the fact that so much power is vested in the director, who sometimes you spend six, nine, 12 months chasing. And then maybe after they sign on and give you a few notes, they jump to a no new project and then your project is dead in the water. So I just wanted to sort of take control of the reins myself. Uh, and as a comics writer, uh, in a way I've been directing. You know, you can think of comics as sort of like slow film. I'm taking the most interesting frames of a film and scissoring them up and taping them together. And I work with a team. I work with, an, you know, an inker uh, who might be different than the penciler. There's, uh, you know, the letterer, there's the colorist. You know, it's a, it's a team of people. So, you know, I wanted to, when I hit my 40s, like level up a little, not just be at the desk playing with my imaginary friends, but sort of chase after that ultimate dream of mine uh, as a storyteller, which is horror movie director. Um, so I started to think about, you know, this first project and what I could write that felt pure and authentic and really, even though it was going to, only going to be, you know, a short sort of dreamscape of a, uh, of a story, that it would still infect the audience uh, memorably. So when I think about my own life and, things that resonate with me fearfully. Um, you know, the only thing that I'm truly afraid of is something bad happening to my kids. Mm -hmm. And when my son was young, he had a lot of issues with croup. Uh, every winter, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd fall ill and his throat would constrict. Uh, and there was one occasion where his face was turning blue. He was a toddler at the time. Uh, there was an ambulance there. It was snowing hard. Uh, this just one image, you know, haunts me. Him going into the back of the ambulance on a stretcher with an oxygen mask on. Uh, I didn't know if he'd be alive when I arrived at the hospital or if they were going to trach him or, or what. And, and spoiler alert, he's fine. He's a freshman in college now. He's, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was limited to that time period, but that time period in and out of the ICU is just like still a raw nerve. Yeah. So that if I hear a kid coughing to this day, it's just like, oh, yeah. it hits me, hits me in the liver. Um, <laughs> and so I wanted to translate that uh, to, to, to film and, and create a story that had like a beating heart at the center of it. Uh, you know, and, and it's a horror story, but you know, if you have a fantastic villain, if you have fantastic set pieces, if you have a fantastic uh, theme and, and, and costuming and everything else, like none of that really matters if you don't have that beating heart at the center of the story. And so at the end of the day, this is about a father and daughter. Yeah. And them trying to take care of each other. Yeah. And then on top of that, we have kind of this, I don't know, monster, creature, creeper, I don't know, creeper, more like it, uh, played by you, Nat, that, that comes into the picture. I love your performance in it. And whenever someone gives a performance that feels as kind of like distinctive and creepy as that, um, I'm always curious what little pieces from your personal kind of like film horror history kind of feed into a performance as specific as that one felt to me. Can you speak to that a little bit? Um, yeah, there's a kind of this long line of sort of pale skeletal, uh, predatory nightmare creatures, you know, that goes back a long way. You know, the earliest one I can think of is Nosferatu from the 20s. Mm -hmm. But this creature pops up again and again. And so there's tons of places to draw inspiration from. But when I was working with uh, Benjamin Bush, who was per the, the actor that was opposite me, um, I really tried to uh, imagine if I were this demon, this creature, um, I probably would take 
great, great pleasure in his suffering. I wouldn't necessarily care about the thing that I'm making him do for me. I love the fact that he feels trapped, mm -hmm. right? And he feels like he has nowhere to turn and I've, I've got him. And I tried to, in the moment, really experience like, what would that be like to be that creature and to take, um, in that moment, pleasure in his suffering, right? And um, that kind of really helps me get into that, that mood, right? Um, but he was great to work next to. He's very emotive, he's very giving. Um, ben had great direction right away. He kind of gave me these great ideas about these are the types of creatures, the types of um, monsters that I would like you to draw inspiration from. And then I added my own types of things. And, um, and it was great. And I just love the idea that it's this sort of uh, demon of capitalism yeah. or, this, or the pharmaceutical industry, okay. right? And that he, he can give you something of what you want, but there's a price. There's always a price. Yeah, yeah I like that. Um, and I guess as a final question to kind of tie into all of that, one of the things that I found so striking about this creature that you guys kind of put together is that while he is very pale, dark hair, he has this black suit, the one piece of him that really stands out is that American flag <laughs> necktie. And is, is so as, as I'm watching it, I'm thinking, you know, this person who looks like, and you had mentioned this in the Q&A, that he looks like a senator. And here he is kind of holding this, um, this uh, uh, medical um, health care over this, this family. Uh, where do you see a connection between those before you write it? And where do you see a connection after you, you write it? Do you, do you feel like that was something that you had in mind going into it? Or when you watch it afterwards, you go, I didn't even realize I was piecing that together. Well, some of the speculative stories that resonate most are ones that channel cultural anxieties. Uh, if you think about Godzilla being about post-atomic unease, if you think about uh, the way that Invasion of the Bar Body Snatchers is channeling McCarthyism, uh, if you look at what's going on with uh, you know racial divisions in this country and what Jordan Peele is doing with us and, and Get Out, right? So uh, I'm thinking about that, of course, whenever I'm crafting science fiction, horror, fantasy, I'm thinking about what's the backdrop, societal backdrop, mm -hmm. uh, that will make this on an uncanny level feel like, feel like a, a cracked v mirror version of our world. Uh, so the other thing to think about is how I'm giving you a short, and whether it's a short story or a short film, what I want is for it to feel like the story keeps going or that the story even preceded what we saw. Mm -hmm. And so even though there's only 15 minutes here, uh, maybe you have that feature in mind, maybe you have that TV series in mind, maybe you have that long lasting narrative in mind that could go back centuries sure. and that might continue forward for centuries. These two have been working together a long time, a long, long time, as Nat says. And you know, you have weapons that date back centuries, you have uniforms in this closet, you know, that uh, span the world. And so, uh, you know, at other moments, this guy might have looked a lot different. He could have, you know, looked like the Roman Empire. He could have looked like the British Empire at another point. So I was trying to think of what is a monster of right now? you know, sort of like this gargoyle of the American war machine, this gargoyle of American capitalism is sort of embodied with that tie. And the other cool thing we did, uh, just to riff off of, like what makes him memorable uh, was the voice. You know, we spent a lot of time thinking about that and we ended up uh, recording him backwards and forwards, like layering those two together and putting a kind of blowing wind through it mm -hmm. just to give it that extra spectral uh, Black Sabbath element. Yeah. Uh, and, and hopefully whether you're watching it on mute or whether you're listening to it, you know, this guy chills you to the bone. It's very chilling. So I, yeah, great short, really loved it. Um, great creeper. Like I said, great direction. Really, really enjoyed it. Thank you both for being here at Horror yeah. Fest. Loved the film. What, where's it going next? What's, what's the, what's the plan from here on out? Uh, we are on the festival circuit and, uh, uh, you know, thinking about this as a potential platform for something bigger, of course. Uh, we're planning our next short right now. I uh, also have, like, a few different features in my pocket, one of which is more in the $3 million range, another one which I think I can shoot if I do everything myself for 50000 okay. So I'm just trying to, 
you know, playing the field right now, even as I work on other Hollywood projects, like I'm, sh you know, this past week I was uh, talking to Netflix, talking to Prime, talking to Apple all about this adaptation of my novel, uh, mm -hmm. The Ninth Metal, and pitching Urban Cowboy at the same time, the adaptation of the 1980 movie. So I'm trying to use that sort of leverage uh, to potentially get like a late block, uh, you know, director gig in TV to help, again, try to convince Hollywood to give me uh, the reins for a feature. Awesome. Well, looking forward to it. Once again, thank you both for being here. Love the short. Stay tuned for more from Horror Fest International.